for a second keep your biases aside keep your fanboyism aside as a tech fan and as a fan of progress can we take a minute to appreciate the insane level of hardware that Xiaomi has put into the Xiaomi 14 Ultra this is one device that truly deserves the Ultra moniker the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is packed to the gills with absolutely bleeding edge hardware everywhere throughout the phone and as a tech fan it is refreshing to see the boundaries of hardware getting pushed yet again when we see tier 1 brands basically rehashing old and outdated hardware as new product while charging exorbitant prices for them you know which brands i'm talking about coming back to the 14 ultra what excites me the most is the insane level of camera hardware that xiaomi has crammed into this relatively slim chassis you see i am a camera geek i own mirrorless cameras lenses uh, i'll own dslrs even i'm shooting this video with another mirrorless camera with an f 1.4 lens so i am a camera geek i love talking about you know cameras image sensors image capturing techniques image processing techniques so the xiaomi 14 ultra really excites me the 14 ultra's camera stack and lens combination is simply bonkers and that's what we'll focus on in this video but before that if you are new to the channel i am diptesh and welcome to the tech station 365 on this channel i make videos that help you make a better buying decision and also help you extract the maximum use out of your device take a look around my channel my videos are pretty unorthodox and if you happen to like them consider subscribing and turning on notifications with that said let's get right into it let's start with the main sensor which is the one inch sony light 950 megapixel sensor and xiaomi has paired it with a lens as wide as f 1.63 this is simply incredible this is the sensor size in the mi 14 ultra this is the sensor size on the iphone 15 pro max and for reference the s24 ultra sensor is even slightly smaller than the iphones to put things in perspective if i'm not wrong and my memory is clear the Mi 14 Ultra is the closest camera device to the old Panasonic LX10 point-and-shoot camera which featured a 20 megapixel 1 inch sensor paired with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens that went as wide as f1.4. I swear to god that many years later it's actually a phone that has come close to matching the Panasonic LX10 sensor and lens combination at this size. I mean, I can only imagine how good the raw image quality will be out of this sensor. Now, not only is the sensor pretty large, the sensor features pretty advanced technology. That is, it features dual native ISO. I was genuinely shocked to see this in the spec sheet because dual native ISO is, you know, proper full frame mirrorless camera sensor stuff. You find it in premium cameras like the Panasonic S1H. You'll find it in the Sony A7S3. You'll find it in the Canon EOS R5C. Uh, etc. Dual native ISO helps the sensor in achieving good dynamic range and great noise performance even at a higher ISO level. Because now you have two base ISO levels or you can see you have two native ISO levels. One will be your lower ISO level which will be suitable for you know daylight when you have enough light outside and the higher ISO level will be for you know lower light situations where you have to raise the ISO. The amazing thing is that this is what is dual native ISO where you have good dynamic range or you can say ideal dynamic range and noise performance at both of these ISO levels that is even at a higher ISO level the second native ISO which is the higher ISO level you are still going to get good noise performance and good dynamic range performance now it is to be seen how Xiaomi has implemented the dual native ISO on the Mi 14 Ultra but in normal mirrorless cameras this is what happens you have two ISO levels so when you want to shoot videos and want the best dynamic range and cleanest picture even at a higher ISO you want to switch to the other higher ISO level and at that higher ISO level you will also get the good dynamic range and the clean noise performance so that is what dual native ISO works like and that's how it works like in mirrorless cameras it is to be seen how Xiaomi has implemented the dual native ISO on the Mi 14 Ultra phone but uh, nonetheless it is a really exciting feature and Xiaomi claims that using this technology they're able they're able to achieve 14 stops of dynamic range now to be honest i find it little you know hard to believe i'm i'm actually skeptical about this because 14 stops of dynamic range is just ridiculous for a one inch sensor i'm sure xiaomi uses some kind of software tricks to achieve this this is an apc sensor it's a pretty large sensor and you know even apc sensor like this will you know struggle to achieve you know 
over 13 stops of dynamic range. So 14 stops of dynamic range is pretty hard to believe, uh, especially with a, with this one in sensor. You know, 14 stops of dynamic range is only achievable with, uh, you know, full frame, high end full frame sensors. So yeah, it is to be seen how Xiaomi has implemented this. But anyways, a one in sensor with an f1.6 aperture along with dual native ISO, I'm pretty sure the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is going to be probably the best video shooting smartphone both during the daytime as well as like definitely during the nighttime. Coming to the rest of the sensor lens stack, it is also amazing because all the other sensors that is the dual telephoto lenses as well as the ultra wide lens have the same sensor, the Sony IMX858, which is a one over 2.5 inch sensor with 50 megapixels. The ultra wide features a 12 millimeter full frame equivalent lens with an f1.8 aperture with autofocus. The 3.2x telephoto features a 75 millimeter full frame equivalent lens also with the widest aperture in flagship scene for a telephoto that is f1.8 and it also features OIS. Finally, the 5x telephoto is also no slouch, featuring a 120mm full frame equivalent lens with a very impressive f2.5 aperture with OIS. This means that apart from the main sensor, the rest of the sensors will also provide you with a great shooting experience and there will be very little compromise in terms of image quality and this just means that you get endless versatility with the 14 Ultra. Apart from the great sensors, let's take a minute to appreciate the lenses that has been used alongside these sensors. Not only all these lenses feature pretty wide apertures, but they also have very close minimum focusing distance, which means you can use all of these lenses, the dual teleport lenses plus the ultra wide to shoot macro shots. And we have seen how impressive the 4.3x optical zoom macro shots look out of the Vivo X100 Pro. I'm sharing some images here that have been shared, you know, on my personal group. The 14 Ultra just gives you even more options now. The main sensor also features stepless aperture from f1.63 to f1.4 which means you can switch between various aperture options between f1.63 and f4 this is truly incredible because this is actually emulating what mirrorless camera lenses are capable of doing where you can switch between various aperture options this is similar to what you find on the galaxy s9 if you remember correctly but the s9 used to switch between two fixed apertures where this is a stepless aperture which means you can switch between f1.63 and f4 between various options between f1.63 and f4 this means when you're shooting close-up images with the main sensor which has a, which is a pretty big sensor which means you have a very shallow depth of field you can control how much of the close-up image you want in focus plus if you shoot at f4 it can be really beneficial when you're shooting landscape images because the f4 aperture will help you know uh, lower the chromatic aberration it will help get more corner to corner sharpness so again lots of versatility with the Mi 14 Ultra. Apart from the photographic features, the 14 Ultra packs some of the most insane video features I have seen on any smartphone. Because of the excellent main sensor with dual native ISO, the 14 Ultra is capable of shooting 10-bit videos in log format where you can actually take advantage of the 14 stops or dynamic range that the main sensor is capable of. Now we do not know what is the maximum resolution and frame rate that you can shoot using log, but nonetheless having log is a really worthwhile feature because using log recording you can extract the most amount of dynamic range out of your sensor. The main sensor is also capable of shooting Dolby Vision HDR of course also in 10 bits. Oh, by the way, did I mention that the main sensor is also capable of shooting up to 4K 120fps? and all the sensors are capable of shooting 8K 30 FPS. Now, a lot of you guys who haven't dabbled with, you know, real cameras like these, you know, uh, you guys will not realize that there is actually a pretty big difference in between image quality produced by a smaller smartphone sensor compared to a significantly larger one inch sensor, you know, the one in sensor packed into these upcoming smartphones is actually extremely impressive. These allow you to achieve what, you know, camera guys call the large sensor look. Large sensor look, you know, it has a shallower depth of field, you have more background blur. There is less software processing, you know, images turn out more natural. They have a, you know, something called the micro contrast. If you have used a real camera, you will understand, you know, these large sensors, they have a distinct look that is no, not produced by, you know, smartphones. So, you know, phones like these, you know, 14 Ultra, the Vivo X100 Pro with this one inch sensors or even the 13, 13 Pro from last year, they are capable of producing this type of image, this look. 
And also, you know, having this high-end sensor means pros can really enjoy shooting raw images. Raw image performance solely depends on the performance of the sensor. There is nothing to do with, you know, your post-processing, how Xiaomi processes images because those things introduced, you know, Sub, those things are subjective, like how every brand processes the image, how every brand produces a JPEG image, that is completely uh, subjective. But when it, when it comes to raw recording, raw videos, raw photos, the sensor is the name of the game. The better the sensor, the better will be a raw image. So I feel that these premium phones are targeted towards enthusiasts and pros. And I think pros will take advantage of the you know the raw photos the raw videos which is where you cannot use cheap lower end sensor and just rely on software okay uh, hardware really really it matters having good hardware means you have a lot of room for improvement whereas software can only take you so much you know that's just the truth okay so that was it guys i mean the 14 ultra has impressed me i mean that is the hardware is just looking incredible i mean show me if you're watching this video Please consider sponsoring me with a device, with a review unit. Give me for one week. I, I'm just, I really want to test out this device so badly. Because I don't remember what smartphone in the last couple of years actually piqued my interest ever since I actually bought the S20 FE 5G. Uh, you know, the 14 Ultra is really a standout device for me. So. That, that was all my opinion about the 14 Ultra, guys. You let me know what you think about the 14 Ultra and what device you are currently using right now. And uh, if you happen to like this content, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.